Welcome back to another fictionalhead.com quick tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to cover how to effectively use Illustrator and FontLab together when making a font because um, they really do work seamlessly together so long as you have all your settings correct. Um, and initially figuring out what those settings were was kind of a hassle for me, kind of a hurdle. So now that I have it figured out, um, you can really just follow these simple steps to get it set up and it should work wonderfully for you as well. Um, basically, trying to design a font in FontLab itself, like if I were to make a new font file and load up a letter here, and actually try and use the pen tool and draw my shapes and my letter forms in FontLab, you're probably not going to have as great of control or level of familiarity as you would with Illustrator. So I usually design all of my font um, letter forms in Illustrator um, <coughs> and then import them into FontLab. And the quickest way to do that is to just copy and paste them over. It really it's, takes just a second to do. Um, but when you do this, if your font file isn't set up correctly in Illustrator, it won't import correctly upon paste into FontLab. So like in this sheet here, I've got this tiny little artboard, but then I have all my letters drawn out here. So like if I was ready to paste the letter D in, um, and always make sure that it's outlined and not like a stroke, like this kind of a thing where you have um, lines like this, because this will probably import, but it won't work the way, it won't be as reliable as an outline. So once you've got all your letter forms made, um, be sure to do object expand and expand your strokes so that they become um, shapes. And then even beyond that, um, like here with the letter D, I've got a stroke for this and then a stroke for the um, bar. Always make sure that with your Pathfinder you combine those so that you get a single shape. And if you forget to do it in here, there are actions that you can run from inside FontLab that'll kill that overlap for you. Um, so that one isn't as important, just so long as you remember to catch it before you're finally done. But say I take my D here and I'm like, okay, that's good to go. Time to paste it into FontLab. Copy, and actually I'll go to the letter D, open it up, paste. But nothing happened, so what's the deal? What actually happened, if you zoom out, it's way up here. And that's because it's going to paste relative to your document here um, in Illustrator. So you can see if this is the EM square for each letter of the font, it pasted way up there, which is similar to the board is here and it's way up there. So if I pasted my T into here, what do you know? It appears way over there because it is way over there. So the key to getting copying and pasting working correctly is to get this EM square to be exact to what it is here in FontLab. And I'll actually provide a download in the description to a blank EM square, which I've created, and it looks just like this. Uh, and this is the one that I use for all of my fonts. It works well. Um, and essentially, what you want to do if you do want to create this for yourself is you do a, under your document setup, um, and if your measurements are in there in an earlier version, that's where you'd change them. Um, in CS5, you have to edit your artboard and then go up here. Uh, you want the width of your EM square to be 1,000 points, PT, and your height to be 1,227 points. Uh, that is the measurement which facilitates the width of all standard letters, a standard EM square for a height, and then room for an A sender, a D sender, so like a Fs tend to go up really high, um, the stick on a D or a B goes up above the top there and then a D sender, which is like your G. Um, let's, let's just go here. So <clears throat> like B, D, F, H, those are all A senders, and then your D senders would be G, J, um, you know, Y, Q, P. And then the guides that you want to draw in there, um, which are relative to the guides here in FontLab, are, um, and actually I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, once you've made this document, be sure to zero out um, your ruler <coughs> by grabbing it um, from that little gap in between the two rulers. If your rulers aren't present, present hit uh, Control-R to pop those open. 
um, zero out your ruler to the upper left corner by dragging down to that corner and letting go. And what that will do is actually make the zero point right here and right here so that all of the rest of the measurements are relative to the upper left corner. Then uh, pop open your transform palette and you can draw a guide and then select it provided that your guides aren't locked here. Um, or, um, well, no, it'd be easier to do it this way. So draw your guide and then in your transform palette, the measurement that we're looking for is Y. So the X is left to right and the Y is top to bottom. So for your Y value, you want the top guide to be at 227 points, so PT. The guide below that to be at 267 points. The guide below that here in the center at 473 points. And the guide at the bottom at 1,000 points. Um, and if you don't want to remember those measurements and type them in yourself, there is a download for this blank EM square in the description. Um, and then once you have those set up, then you can lock your guides so that you can't grab them anymore. And once you have this EM square, you can pretty much do what I do uh, to keep it simple and keep all your letters just in the same file. Um, your pasteboard is big enough to hold pretty much all of the characters in a character set. The only real issue with this is if your file gets corrupt and you try to you know, get the data back, it's only gonna save what's inside the artboard. So all of this stuff is kind of forfeit. So once you've made this sheet, you might wanna um, adjust your artboard and just make it gigantic to, whoops, to uh, hold all that data and then save it off as its own file. So that way, that way you know all of those shapes are saved. Um, that's more of just a file handling thing. But once you have all that saved, now, since I know that the pasting is going to be relative to this board here, and that vertical guide is just an extra one that I added, if I were to take my shape, my letter form, and place it exactly where I want it to be in Font Lab, and now if I hit copy and paste, bam, it appears right where I want it and I can set the um, kerning left bound and right bound for it and I'll make more tutorials on Font Lab later dealing with uh, left and right kerning, um, all that kind of stuff. But now that it's pasted in there, I can easily just back out, go to the next letter, um, copy the E down, um, make sure again that you've combined everything, move it down, copy the E, paste the E, and then very easily I can go through and plug in all the letters for the font. Uh, and actually in Illustrator you can set up an action that just using the transform palette um, moves the shape right to where you want it. So like just record yourself moving it to probably, yeah, zero, and then a thousand will move it right down to where it needs to be. So you can just keep going through and moving them all down to here, paste them in, and then everything's good to go. Um, if you're making a non-traditional font where this EM box is not the one you'd want to use, uh, I, I personally wouldn't do that, but if for some reason you are, those settings are under your font info. If you go to the metrics and dimensions tab, and then under key dimensions, you can see that these numbers here are essentially these guides here. So if the ascender is at 750, um, you'll notice that if, if this here was 1,000, the bottom one, then minus 250 um, would give you, or minus 750 from 1,000 would put you up to where the ascender is in this box, because ours was like 250 or 227 which would give you the number there, and it's showing you it, where it cuts through on the E. So if you wanted, you could adjust these dimensions, um, like I just turned the ascender height up to 1200, and now it's way up here. Uh, but when you do stuff like that, it's gonna make the font irregular. So when people are um, typing with your font, like so, and actually that's really tiny. Hang on a second. Um, and I'm sure you've all seen this before when you're 
going through fonts, but if someone's going through fonts like this, looking at all the different ones, generally they all stay the same size and they all obey the same point size so that 12 is 12 and 14 is 14. That's the whole point of using the EM square. Um, every now and then you'll get a font made by somebody who didn't quite follow the rules correctly. So like 12 point, or just assume this is 12 point even though it's blown up really huge. Most of these look about the same in size, but then every now and then you'll hit one that's just way bigger than all the others. And that's because that person didn't follow the um, EM square as close as everyone else did. So I really should have just stuck with that one that I found. Well, even here, you can see that between these and these, these got really smaller than these. So whoever made this font must have had a smaller EM square than the people who made these fonts. So generally, you stick to the same EM square. Uh, and once you have that set up, just make sure that you uh, center your character where you want it before you copy and paste it into FontLab, and then you'll be good to go. Um, with handwriting fonts, you know, you can get a little crazy. It doesn't matter if it's not lined up mathematically 100% perfect because handwriting is always a little more sloppy um, and it's not going to matter. But if you're making a font that's like a sans serif or a serif where it really needs to be the exact same baseline and the exact same grid, um, just pop open your transform palette, grab your characters, and really just make sure, like, if it needs to be at 0, 0, to align correctly, make sure it's at zero, zero before you copy and paste it. And you'll be good, good to go from every character you paste in there. So basically that's the, the quick setup, the nitty gritty of getting copying and pasting working flawlessly between Illustrator and FontLab. Um, you can check my other videos. I have a, <coughs> excuse me, a let's make art episode on creating this font, the, um, FH hyperbole uh, and it <clears throat> it plays back at 8x speed because it's like 30 hours of footage but you can see how I go through this process of um, finalizing every letter moving it to the EM square here copying and pasting into the program and then adjusting from there for how I want to produce my font um, I'll make a follow-up video a little bit in a little bit with uh, more info on how to set up all this stuff here in font lab um, but if you have any questions regarding this EM square uh, thing set up, just be sure to shoot them to me on Facebook, YouTube comments, or whatever. Um, and check the link in the description for the download of the blank EM square if you don't want to create your own. Uh, I'll probably make it in Illustrator 8 so that most people can open it, but um, it'll just be a tiny download to get you started. So uh, yeah, that was it. Hope it was helpful, and catch you guys next week.